Hey guys, so today I'm going to be reviewing Mineral's 25th anniversary release. Uh, Mineral are my favourite band. They released two albums. They released uh, a split with uh, Jimmy Eat World and a few other various singles. They're probably one of the most uh, influential bands of emo. They influence so many bands and yeah, I thought I'd um, just do a little vlog because they're, some, they're a band that I'm really passionate about and they've yeah, changed my life. And they're not a really very well known band but they have a massive influence over any sort of modern like rock music you'll hear. Um, even modern rap music uh, because uh, I feel that rap's like a really healthy genre, it always takes other bits, good parts from those of other genres which rock doesn't which is kind of why it's failing a bit now. But um, it's influenced so many artists and uh, yeah, so if you ever hear like any sort of corporation emo from like the mid 2000s, which I still love, like My Chemical Romance, if you hear their first album, uh, you'll notice a similarity between Gerard Way's vocals and Chris Simpson's, and that's probably because they were, they were, I assume, most probably influenced by the sort of 90s, really early 2000s emo scene, which they kind of uh, came out of originally. If you are a first time listener, I'd probably recommend listening to If I Could by, uh, by them, uh, Gloria, Unfinished, Sounds Like Sunday, MD, February, or um, Love Letter Typewriter with Palisade because those two songs just go so well together. So yeah, if you actually um, go and listen to them, which you should after hearing this, like I'd recommend to probably listen to those songs for the first time because they're kind of the leeway songs that kind of draw you into their, their genius. And my favourite album of all time is End Serenading. Uh, that album has just changed me in every way. Like when I first heard that, I was coming out of bit of a bit of a sub story, but I just want to explain like why I love this band so much. Like when I first heard that album, like I was like coming out of like depression, and I was starting to realize like the joy of life and using all my tools to enjoy life, and I was really feeling such a good feeling towards life. And like Mineral were part of that for me. They like gave me. Uh, they were part of that feeling that I could really feel that made me enjoy life. That when when I hear their songs. Uh, the, the structures, the way they sound, the way Chris uh, uh, Simpson's vocals are, you know, I really uh, feel myself in that and I really feel um, that part of me that really pushed, that really pushed out and uh, took a lot of strength to enjoy life. So Mineral have basically like shaped everything uh, about my life, all that, they're, they're, they're part of that bubble for me. So the package is called One Day When We Are Young. As soon as I saw it, like I had to order the whole thing, so I got like the book uh, the vinyl and I got the ticket to go see them in London so Mineral if you're watching this uh, please please give me a shout out in London I'd love that but that won't happen um, but yeah so I'll, uh, I'm about to open it so yeah da, da, da. so here I have it I kind of already like took the set tape off so it didn't look so awkward when I was trying to open it but yeah, well, here it is. Look at this shit, man. Looks fucking awesome. I'm excited. Oh my god. <laughs> so, yeah, I wonder what this is. I'm actually really interested to see what it looks like inside. I think if you're like not a mineral, if, like, if you haven't heard of mineral yet. For like a first time, I'd recommend like buying and serenading and stuff like that because um, like the book uh, is probably like you'll enjoy more once you've got into them. But definitely uh, get into them and then after that you go and buy the book. But yeah, it's the first time I've actually seen this. So but. okay, this is gonna take some time. Bruh, it's the vinyls. Oh shit, I'm not gonna be able to get this out with one hand. Oh shit, fuck. Um, ah, this shows how useless I am at everything. Right, what's this? That's fucking cool, man. Actually, this is the first vinyl that I've ever bought in my life. Like, I got a record player, like a second-hand one, like a few months ago. So, this is cool. This is the first one I ever got. 
and I'm so pleased it's a mineral one. So yeah. Anyway, I'll listen to this. Um, I've already heard the songs, but I'll go through the book and then I'll get back to you with my thoughts and feelings. Okay, so it's been a few days, I've read the book, I've re-listened to the songs even though I've already heard them a hundred times and yeah, so this is what I think about it. I'll probably start with the song Aurora. I think Aurora was such a good song, you know, as soon as I heard the guitars you can hear Mineral and um, in the book it was talking about how they were a bit worried that they weren't going to sound the same but, you know, I think that was, that, that was foolish because uh, these guys, when they get together, they could write a trance album and it would still sound like Mineral in some way, it's crazy. Um, so as soon as I heard the guitars, I, I could hear Mineral in it, and then when it got to that first chorus, when the power hit, you know, when Chris's passionate vocals really come in, you hear that sort of slightly distorted guitar sound, and then you have that power just the whole band make, you know, it was it was so good uh, to hear, and it was such a revealing thing to feel, man, so I was so pleased about the song. I think the length of the song was not a problem at all. I think Mineral is such a soul-enhancing band that um, you know there's there are a band that could write an eight minute song and because so many people connect to it you know you could just go on like a trance there's a bit at the end I think at five minutes twenty two when it goes into, into sort of like spacey bit with the vocals and then um, which which feels really nice and it goes into that last drop and then you know that's where you know you can really just go off and one for ages and listen to it I mean it's so fucking good man so that song is amazing the song two is called Your Body Is The World and as soon as it kicks in with the sort of synth and the drums you know, it sounds different, but again, not that it doesn't sound like Mineral. So yeah, as I said with Aurora, in the book they uh, they were saying about they were a bit worried it wouldn't sound the same. And I feel, um, yeah, that that's foolish, but like, they also said that they were wanting to, you know, they weren't just writing to write the old stuff, you know, they, they wanted to feel like they're the same band, but they... Um, they obviously wanted a mature sound and I think this song like really hit, hits it there because you know when the guitars come in and Chris's uh, voice comes in you know that's like you can hear you can hear the old mineral but I think this song shows such a more mature sound and I think it's really refreshing that the band done that and I think they need to do that and, and yeah and there's a line that stood out that says when we were just lambs we never thought we'd be the sheep and it was interesting to me why they say that because I don't think mineral are sheep at all maybe that's not why they said that but um, you know, they walked away because they felt in their hearts it was right from an Interscope deal. So I really don't think that they're sheep. But yeah, so I was a bit, I, I want to know why Chris wrote that. But yeah, so I thought the song was really good and showed a mature sound. And again, a good song, great music video. I've read the book and I thought it was really good. Um, as a fan, I feel that it was really insightful to me to know why they broke up more clearly because there was loads of things that you, you heard and, and were true, but I think um, you've got such a good perspective because the band just basically explained how they felt at the time and what was going through their minds so now I really understand why they broke up so I think it's really good that they, they clarified that um, and it was really good to know um, where they were at when they were writing this record. The, the other thing in uh, Mineral's interview that was really interesting was when they were speaking about uh, maybe signing to Interscope or they were signed but they didn't do the third album and they were saying you know what they thought would have happened if they did do the third album and some people said uh, and they said that we thought we, we could have been shelved or um, they, they weren't really sure but my opinion is uh, I don't think Mineral uh, would have just released an album and it would have gone nowhere on uh, Interscope because you know, there were so many bands uh, around that era that broke up that had a few uh, good records and a buzz around that scene but uh, aren't really known about now so when a band like Mineral break up that were I guess only really big in that scene and their records uh, still have a buzz and probably are growing like two decades later you know that really says that if they were put on a good platform that they would have blown up so my opinion is I think if they were put on Interscope they would have been massive because they have such a sound that I think can, is really special and can touch a lot of people but you know if in their hearts it's not what they wanted to do then I think they made the right decision at the time uh, not to sign because they were saying how overworked and stressed out they were but um, they look back and regret it so I don't know but at the time you know it's what they wanted to do and 
they, they chose to do that, so I can't really, can't really fault them on that. Other than the band interview, there was uh, quite a few interviews from various artists that knew them, and uh, I'll probably speak about two of my favourite interviews from the book. The two interviews I really liked was uh, Jeff Klein, I think that's how you say his second name, and then Frank from My Chemical Romance. Um, I found Jeff's interview to be really interesting because he was around them and you know he got a really good insight into their lives. He made friends with Chris I think in 2004, he didn't even know who Mineral were so he kind of just came to them as a friend which was really good because um, he's just got a better understanding and an overview and seeing this sort of reunion happening that happened in 2014 and uh, 2018. So it was good to know the inner workings and all the stuff behind the scenes from his perspective. The other interview I really liked was Frank's from My Chemical Romance because um, before I uh, read the book I said I think My Chemical Romance were probably influenced by Mineral and then he was saying you know how much he loves Mineral and stuff like that so it was really interesting uh, to see that clarified and um, in the interview he did say that I think he said something about um, him not really knowing who Mineral were until they were recording the first record or something, he didn't really know who they were until around that sort of time, so maybe they didn't influence the first Michael McCormick's record as much as I thought, but um, they, Michael McCormick's at the time would have been uh, influenced by loads of bands that were influenced by Mineral, so it just makes sense. Um, and also, when um, you hear Michael McCormick's later records, you can definitely hear Mineral, especially in the guitars, so it does make a, a lot of sense. Uh, why he would like them. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. Uh, give my channel a subscription. Uh, I'll put my Instagram down on the bottom and go check out Mineral's latest record because it's fucking amazing. I hope I've laid you on to a hidden gem and if you can go and see them, go and see them because it'll be worth it. You'll never probably get an opportunity to see a band like Mineral again in your life. So definitely check them out and if you like them, yeah, go see them because it will be worth it.